Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Sir Cypher here with Let's Play Warhammer Mark of Chaos, mission number four. Um, and we are going to go to the town of Erstedorf, which is under attacked by under attack by the forces of chaos. So I did actually buy the sword this time. And uh, we'll bring our friend the Bright Wizard and lots of handgunners and swordsmen. So, uh, we will put, uh, Stefan in this little unit here, and we'll keep what the Bright Wizard out here. Do, now, of the Empire, Erstadorf must not fall. Avenge the fallen and bring honor to the lands of Sigma. In case you were wondering what the halberdiers look like, these are, uh, militia halberdiers. Soldiers. Send these barbarians to the realm of Moor! Forward! We are yours to command. So we'll kind of have half the guys over here. Ready and we'll have half the guys eager, over Lord. here. I bring now, um, the emperor's foes. just like because yes, been hating on this game a lot, um, this game could be a lot better, but there's a couple things that it actually does do really well. Um, one thing that I actually like about it is the way the unit banners are set up. Um, I think they're really informative. Um, compared to say like the Total War games, because in this one little space you have um, you have morale, you have stamina, and you have the unit health, and I think those are pretty cool. Um, I like that. Uh, I like the way the game looks. I think the graphics are really good, especially for being almost almost well six years, almost seven years old now. So there's that, and there's Chaos Marauders for skin shot. Um, but obviously it does have a lot of faults. But it's not like a horrible game by any stretch of the imagination. So, um, we're supposed to defend all of the buildings in the town. But they're out here breaking this building, which is fine, because there is an item in it. And we can't break it, they have to break it for us. Uh, there is morale in this game, somebody asked that in the thread. Um, but the thing is though is your units will like never break. Um, your units have to get like fucked up in this game to break. And same thing with the enemy. Um, the enemy only breaks uh, when she gets really rough. So um, it's a little purple bar. You also when you mouse over it'll tell you the morale percentage. Um, but it doesn't really uh, help you too much because your units basically never break. So we'll go out here and fight that stuff. Throw some fireballs. You can see now uh, it leaves fire on the ground, which has a chance to uh, hurt dudes. We have learned much from we are yours Give to command. command. Christ, Sigma. And, um, the so we'll just chase these guys off. Ready and willing. Full volley. Sigma, grant us victory. And we'll also go Ready in here and Sigma. get these marauders. There's a magical banner on the ground which we'll give to no our swordsmen. That um no man can fight these creatures is one of the chaos. Um, chaos like retreat calls because the enemy units you can hear their retreat cries in this game but it's especially funny when it's coming from guys like fighting these these yellow and purple these guys these yellow and purple jumpsuits um, and they're like these these crazy giant warriors from the frozen wastes um, I think it's pretty funny like it's one thing if they're fighting like the high elves or skaven like rat ogres and but you know they're saying no man can fight these creatures to these guys right here um the units these the, the empire is based off of uh, the Holy Roman Empire historically and so that's what their uniforms are based off of it's kind of like fancy Renaissance era um, uniforms with the puffy sleeves and all that and their colors are based on uh, what province of the empire they're from and I think these guys are supposed to be from Taliban and I guess these are the Taliban cover colors the coolest ones are um, black troops are from Nuln um, I forget what some of the other colors are but uh, a little political 
political dialogue. Um, the Empire is not technically like one country. It's like a federation of different little states and uh, these provinces. And um, they come together and they elect an emperor. Uh, so the emperor of the empire is not like a hereditary position. It's you get elected. We await your orders. Advance so let's see here. Some more points for Stefan von Kessel here. Pray Sigma. Hmm. Maybe I'll bring the warrior priest or the uh, bright wizard over here. To the foes. And another thing about the Empire is that unlike, for example, the Imperium and Warhammer 40k, the Empire is very much the good guys. Um. I mean, they're obviously, you know, they have their problems, but they're not, like, the horribly racist, fascist, like, evil society that the Imperium of Man is, Warhammer 40k. They are surprisingly progressive for a, uh, fantasy, uh, barbarian, or, for a, like, medieval fantasy empire. Fire! Your allies in Altdorf have sent me. And the Empire is very multicultural. There's dwarves in the Empire, there's halflings, there's some elves. Um, and they're allies with all those people. We shall rule the battlefield. I think that the uh, the Games Workshop is kind of trying to ignore it oh, in recent editions. But because Warhammer Fantasy was originally like a mishmash of like Tolkien and all these other sort of uh, fantasy settings, there's there's halflings, like literal like hobbits in the Empire. And, you know, they had little furry feet and everything. And they lived in a place called the Moot. Um, and, uh, but they haven't really been showing up much <laughs> in the newer books because I think that the... Uh, they're trying to make the game a little bit more serious and less, um, uh, the, the famous halfling unit was this unit that had like a catapult, but it was a stew pot and they would like shoot the stew. It's called the halfling hot pot. They'd shoot like the stew, <laughs> the stew at the enemy, which is actually not very characteristic of the halfling of hobbits to waste, to waste food, but, uh, that's what they were. But they've kind of like quietly removed it from the uh, from the game. So we have more here. This is our first taste of, uh, I think the first taste of Chaos Warriors. These are the uh, Chaos Heavy Infantry. They're wearing full plate. They're very scary. But, give them a good old volley there. Take out most of them. Why are you guys running? Shoot. Throw some. Uh, so there's one guy left, but he's gonna get taken out there. And uh, we have our little militia squad here, engaging the main force. Another thing about the empire is the empire is one of the only. It might really be the only um, faction in Warhammer that actually has a professional army. Um, the regiments are trained by the state and um, protect the empire. Uh, where almost every other faction, they have like some sort of like warrior tradition, or they um, the high elves kind of have like a citizen militia. But um, for the empire, you just enlist. That's how it works. Fight in the regiments. Bring destruction to the so, uh, we'll get some more powerful flames on the ground. Yes, my lord. Advance on the and, enemy. Uh, we'll throw some I more fireballs. To the Emperor's foes. And the Let's see if we can take out these uh, Chaos Wars with a volley fire. Just killed like almost all of them. Independent fire. Death and, glory. and it looks like we're chasing these guys off pretty well. So we'll bring these guys back over here. Wind of action blows strong here. No 
as you can see, uh, once we have our full complement of handgunners, they just dish out the punishment. Um, they kill people very quickly. For some reason, the uh, unit box thing isn't going away. Here, let me see if I can fix this. Doesn't seem like it can, so I guess we'll just get an extra exciting um, numerical representation of whatever unit I'm fighting. Bring these handgunners back. Now, the, the fireball is better against range units because uh, if they don't move, then they just stand in the fire and they take the full, the full constant fire damage. And as far as I know, it doesn't cause friendly fire. The only thing in this game that actually causes friendly fire is siege weapons, like cannons and stuff like that. Um, most magic doesn't cause friendly fire. So no man can fight these creatures. Oh, these... Breath. What an abomination. Slay the spawn of chaos. Ready and willing. Oh, another thing that's sort of interesting is that um, unlike Warhammer 40k, the Empire in Warhammer Fantasy is religiously tolerant. Um, they worship as their main god, their founder Sigmar, but they're also totally cool with all of the old gods. Well, not like the old, old gods, like the Chaos Gods, but like Auric, the god of winter and wolves and fighting, and Mor, the god of death, and there's these gods of healing. Oh, drink my plus one health potion. So uh, there's all sorts of uh, little gods that they fight, which is basically, I think, supposed to represent uh, the Romans once they... Um, uh, once they start having emperors, they treated the emperors as gods, but they still uh, follow the old gods too. Where is Stefan von Kessel doing? He's just walking around. I think he really wants to kill this last guy. But anyway, it looks like our dudes out here are getting pounded. So I better go make sure that they have some support here. And at the same time, have my handgunners. Shoot this Chaos Spawn. Chaos Spawn, uh, they can uh, shoot these little laser things. <laughs> the slaves of the Dark Gods will never defeat Freeman. That's us. So I like the Empire a lot. They're obviously not as cool as like the Skaven and the... Um, some of the other factions like Vampire Counts are pretty cool. Orcs are pretty crazy. But I just feel like they're trying their best in a harsh world. And uh, they can kind of do it without being incredibly super evil like uh, the Imperium and Wormer 40k. So these guys are retreating. Well, we'll give them some, give them some volley fire here. And then we'll come back. Your skull will make a fine trophy for my banner, weak Southling. We shall prevail. There shall be no retreat. Sigma, I am so I'm going to actually hustle my guys back over here because we have learned much um, from I don't want to actually fight this guy. This is their their hero. He is a chaos champion, and um, I just want to shoot him to death because that's like way more exciting. The wind of actually blows strong. So, I, shall lead the I will get forward. these guys before they can break these buildings. For Magnus and the Empire. Now, um, Chaos Champion, or uh, Chaos Warriors, the guys in this crazy armor. Uh, not these, but you know, these other guys with the crazy armor. Those, uh, those are the Chaos Heavy Infantry. We, we're not going to get our Heavy Infantry until the next book, which is only a couple missions away. And that's going to be Great Swords. Actually, we might not get it until the third book. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, but those are great swords, and they are the Empire Heavy Infantry. So here's the Chaos Champion. We'll see how well he champions a storm of lead. Bam. <laughs> and then we'll get his little, his little Chaos Spawn pet. Oh, my volley fires are... So I guess I gotta go fight him, actually. Um, we'll you can see that his health's going down pretty fast as these uh, hand gunners just blast the crap out of him. And yay! Everybody's dead. Our cause is just must continue. 
So that is it for this mission. We have defended the town. Only taken a few casualties. Uh, the militia took some casualties. We took 11. We took 12. Um, but we killed 107, 197 guys, so we did okay. So, uh, 3,500 gold. And uh, now we're in Erstedorf. So we can do some quick... Uh, the only guy that took any casualties were the swordsmen. So we'll replace them. Um, we'll make sure that they have this cool banner here. Which, what does it do? It, uh, 9 is 30% morale loss, but again, um, if a unit breaks in this game, then they are taking some serious crap, let me tell you, and they should probably not be fighting. Um, other than that, I think we're good. I don't think there's any more items to buy. Oh, plus 15 stamina. Hmm, let's buy these. We'll give the speed boots to Stephon Castle. Bright Wizard tends to be running around a lot, so we don't want him to get we don't want him to get too tired. And um so we can buy this shield too for Stefan. Uh what is it? Uh plus one armor. The reason I'm buying all this crap is because we are gonna fight now a duel. I'm also gonna buy some more handgunners. You can never have too many handgunners, so let me just make sure these handgunners are good because we are going to need them for the next mission alright so we're all set let's go here glad to see you made it it's been a hard road but yes we're here now good my men are ready when yours are rested we shall prepare for the assault we'll make ready at first light okay so this is technically the next spot, but because Stefan von Kessel likes to dilly-dally, we are going to go on a little side mission. Um, it's, there's a fork in the road, and I'm going to do this because it's only going to take a couple of minutes uh, instead of the next one. So, um, a solitary war steps into view. It's a massive orc, so now we're going to duel. Um, like I said, I think um, this is optional. And uh, it's one of a couple. I think every book has at least one duel. So I think it's just four duels in the whole thing. Um, and it's the same duel rules as you do when you just fight someone on the battlefield. You ain't getting past. I'm gonna he feed you to the squigs. Come from the field. Let's see what else we got here. Um, get uh, more storm of. Um, So, uh, this is how the thing works. Here's the Orc War Boss. This, this is the reason I bought this equipment, because, uh, you can actually lose this if you're horrible. Um, and we have these special dual abilities. We have Parry, and we have Hand of Sigmar. And there is technically some strategy to duels, like which time, and we'll get more as we get higher level of, like, the timing of when you use certain abilities and, like, interrupting your opponent. But I just don't care because you're pretty much always going to be higher level and have better equipment than the people you're dueling in the campaign. So you just spam everything and you're normally okay. You can see that uh, we're stomping this guy. Even though we have, we have no points in the duel tree. So nothing much to it. Just gotta gotta grind this dude down. And the reason it tells you what they're using is because later on we'll get stuns and stuff. So if the guy starts some big attack, you can stun him and stop it. But like I said, I don't I don't know all the abilities, and it doesn't really matter. Um, this is going to be the closest duel we ever fight. All the other ones, we're going to take like two damage and kill everyone. So we're victorious. Uh, we killed one guy. They lost one guy. So we got 2,000 gold. Now the next mission is going to be a siege. So we're going to have to take a castle. So you'll get to see the siege system, which is 
not that polished um, as you'll see and we're gonna make a couple little more adjustments to our army before we do that but I'll save that for the next video so thank you for watching and have a nice day